much you drink last night, Rob? Warnberg. Oh my God. It would be easier to measure what I didn't drink last night. But I will say that it was involving bourbon, whiskey, and I think some scotch, though I can't be entirely sure. Ugh. It was a bad combination. It was a long, sleepless night. It has been a fucking 24-hour hangover, and the day's not over yet. I'm just presuming it's still going to last that So that's long. how you spent your Black Friday, not getting door buster sales, but just, uh, you Be- know, being black hungover. Out fucking Blackout drunk. drunk. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You know, because that's how, that's how I show my respect to the pilgrims. All right, yeah. Yeah, well, hope everybody out there had a lovely uh, Thanksgiving. This is being recorded on Black Friday, but Bill, it will be released in the uh, future. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> yeah. released not on Black Friday. Not on Black future, Friday. Where yeah. things that that's affect now. you in the future will happen exactly. in the future. That's my really piss poor Criswell from Plan 9. Perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah. excellent. You. I'm even That's more it. broken, I think, than I was on um, the Green Clawed Beast. But you know what? We're going to plug through this. We are. We're going to do it. We're going to slog That's through. Right. Dude, I've well. passed out on the pod. <laughs> It's happened to the best. It happened. S- slept on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I'm pretty sure at one point I was like, cheek to mic. See, there's just a level of podcasts where there's like super professionals and then there's just us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like one of us might be, you know, having a panic attack. The other one's fucking hung over. The other one's sleeping. No big deal. <laughs> it's fine. Hey. It's how, it's how podcasts work. All walks of life. Exactly. Indeed. Everyone can we podcast. We muddle through somehow. All right. Before we get started with this week, we want to give a shout out and a bit of an announcement here for Hellier. Hellier Season 2 dropped today yep. uh, on Amazon Prime. And again, that is Season 2. Uh, it will be available on YouTube uh, December 13th in digital downloads. So check it out there. And uh, yeah, if you're not checking out Hellier, man, I've been telling Rob about this. Like, I'm like, dude, you gotta fucking watch season two of Hellier. Holy fucking shit, dude! There's so much cool shit going on in it. I don't even want to give any spoilers. Check it out. It's awesome. I can't wait. Yeah, it's super fucking dope. So, and again, that is uh, oh, where's the website again? Hellier TV. But it is available on Amazon Prime. And you have Amazon Prime, right? In Dubadilly. All right, Christopher, you don't. I don't. But you have the link with the access to all the all the I episodes. Do. There you go. So there it is. Boom, Hellier. Um, welcome to the Kryptonite Podcast. I am Mark Storrs, and with me as always is Chris <laughs> and Rob Morris. That, that was piss poor on my part. I'm going to apologize. That was my fault. And you know, I didn't think you did anything wrong. It felt like something was off. I have something, to admit, something happened. But I'm not laying blame on no, anyone. No. If it goes bad, when I'm back, it's not going to be like, oh crap, it was. Yeah. No one's well, going to be like, oh off. my god remedial introduction sometimes you guys you gotta, suck not listening you know, to this one sometimes you gotta like just live in it unsubscribed you know? i mean thanksgiving black friday rob's drunk i've been watching hell you all fucking day i'm all fucking tweaked out it happens there you go watching kids my wife oh real quick it's crying season i tell you about that it's crying season it's crying season because holidays i didn't know that yeah uh no it's christmas movie season so nicole watches oh. a bunch of christmas movies oh, and cries. God, oh my god. god it's christmas shoes is that a fucking movie ah uh, christmas shoes no <laughs> i don't think it is it's, it's a real no but it was it song, wasn't like a song right yeah i, I could have sworn they made a movie out of it yeah i'm gonna put it out there that i need fucking to see christmas a shoes. crypto christmas movie oh good luck well, with that that would be dope is krampus a cryptid I mean, I, Krampus. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's I guess. more like a supernatural entity, but that doesn't mean, I mean it's, it's not a cryptid. A thin line. Yeah. I'm just saying there should be Christmas movies. There's the fuck Christmas Prince, the Christmas Night, still K N I G H T. We as a night in a former wow. podcast long ago. Oh, we did a whole thing on holiday traditions, and there was lots of creatures. There was. There was oh, the absolutely. goddamn like the Yule lads. Yeah, the Yule lads and their, and like their apex Yule... predator. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's a cat. There's a the, Yule. The fucking the Yule tiger. Cat. <laughs> yeah, the fuck it was. And there was like sausage stuffer or something like that. Remember sausage the little yeah. stuffer? It was the little fucking one of the little Yule lads. Should we do that for Christmas for December? Yeah, you know, it, you know what? That might be a fun uh, evil science and magic buddies. It could be. All right, this week we are going back to cryptozoology. We're talking about the ninja. We're not or, sure if I spelled it or if I'm pronouncing it right. Chris, would you no, like you're 100% to... not. Okay, but is it... I, I'm not a Japanese expert. I can't do it, but you guys watch the the, the fucking tokusatsus. I don't. We like, watch a lot of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. As far as I can tell, it's Ningen. Ningen. Okay, so Ningen. That's what it sounds like. Nailed today. it. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right, so concerning the Ningen... <laughs> <laughs> well played. You like that? Yeah. Locked eyes with you. Yeah, you did. It made you feel it. It was a little more intimate than I was. I hate when he does that. He yeah. does the quick turn in the stair. Yeah. And you're like, exactly. what do I do now? Yeah, I'm just waiting to see if Rob's going to puke. 
God, Can't wait no. to see if no. he's going to fucking no lose No threat it. of that, my friends. <laughs> All right, let's get started with at the tail end of the 20th century, Japanese fishermen had a face-to-inhuman face encounter with a colossal quasi-humanoid creature that was the first in a string of sightings of gargantuan beasts who seemed to have spontaneously emerged from the Arctic depths to both mystify and terrify eyewitnesses as they lay claim to the crown as the new lords of the seven seas. Ugh. You like that? appropriate level of drama. You like that? Yeah, well, I've been working on my acting. I got, yeah, I got no. a whole character thing going on here. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, no, I Strasburg's it. rolling in his grave, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The Dave Mustaine version was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That you didn't hear of. Maybe at the oh. end, I'll uh, stick around for the end. Maybe I'll do the Dave Mustaine version of our intro because, uh, yeah, because Megadeth is a thing that we all need to fucking reconcile with at one point in our lives. Facts. Yeah. Facts and science. All right, Robert, bring it. How do you get better, I'm just going to start by saying, than the Japanese and giant monsters? No, well, yeah, you can't. Classic. I it's mean, all of our favorites. You don't. And here it is, real world, perhaps, but I digress. The ocean's depths are vast and mysterious and full of enigmatic oddities that have never seen the light of day. But while there are few who would deny that the seas are teeming with as yet undiscovered life forms, most would be reticent to admit that there are any truly gargantuan species waiting to be found in the fathomless deep. Nevertheless, Despite the inherent unbelievability of the premise, reports have been filtering in from the icy reaches of the world's oceans regarding a massive marine monstrosity quite unlike anything else that has ever been reported to dwell therein. Are we going to need a bigger boat? We Yeah. Well, yeah. We need one? We're going well, yeah. to need our, the crypto research vessel. The not two. <laughs> we can't be in charge of that. I, Do we know no, people we'll have to hire a captain. Do we know boat people? Thor hired all. We don't. We don't really know. No, because I don't know. I mean, I could figure out how to, I guess, do it. But Ningen or Ningen? Nin, fuck. How do we say it again now? Christopher. Ningen. 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 Okay, I'm gonna try to do this. Which translates as <laughs> human in Japanese was so dubbed by the Pacific fishermen who claimed to have seen the colossal creature in the 1990s. These professional anglers were astounded by the size of this monster and were even more shocked by the ostensibly albino beast's distinctly humanoid form. Said to be between 60 and 90 feet in length, the Ningen has been described as being a humongous, and I quote, blubbery whale-like creature whose smooth pale form vaguely resembles the head, torso, and appendages of a human being. Oh, that's gross. Sometimes it's said to have like two dangly leg type things. Right. Other times it's more like a mermaid But being, flipper. Yeah. being 60 to 90 feet in length, so it's like a giant. It's a big one. It's a, like a literal giant. I mean, it's... Like a sea giant. We're starting to rival blue whale action here. Okay. But it looks like a human... Well, Gross. it looks more human than anything else okay. that should be in the ocean. I wouldn't say it looks spot on. Right. You know, it's not like <clears throat> the David Spade of the waves. There he is. <laughs> what? A human. The ar- we all agree he's the archetypal human, right? David Spade? Oh, yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. I guess. I, I There's guess. not a consensus on that? Oh, no. Sorry. Sorry. Man. David Spade, hey, David man. Spade of, the waves. of the waves. All right. Because of David Hasselhoff or whatever. No big deal. Because a lot of things. But he is not archetypal. He no. is unique. He is. Okay. These beasts supposedly have been seen in the Pacific, Antarctic, and South Atlantic Oceans and are always described as being extraordinarily large, extraordinarily large, with a whitish complexion. Many observers have also reported that these animals have no distinct facial features save for two huge, vacuous eyes and a slit-like mouth. According to most accounts, these creatures are primarily nocturnal and tend to thrive in frigid Arctic waters. Initial reports of these marine animals were said to have emanated from the tail end of the 20th century, which is strange considering how many centuries mariners have been traversing the world's oceans with nary a mention of these bizarre and purportedly gigantic beasts. But before we try and figure out what these things actually are, let's take a look at what little history we have regarding these captivating creatures. While the first known reports of these mammoth monstrosities are apparently untraceable, it is accepted that the first Ningen report 
did not gain any real notoriety until a description of these creatures appeared online in a popular Japanese forum known as Two Channel. You familiar with that at all? Um, I'm not. I know of the fucking hell hole of 4chan. It is the internet trash can. I know of that, but I've never heard of 2 channel. Yeah, this is way back in the 90s. I don't want to look it up. Oh, no. No. I, I just didn't know yeah. if you'd heard of okay, it, if yeah. it was somehow known. No. <laughs> I know no. nothing about it. No. The individual posting claimed to have been working on a government whale research vessel when one of these creatures rose up from the depths. According to the account, the anonymous crew member, along with fellow researchers, scrambled up onto the deck to catch a glimpse of what they initially thought was a quote-unquote foreign submarine. Oh, you think it's the enemy, but guess what? It's not. Or maybe it is. Good maybe point. Maybe it is. Enemy oh, God, all right. Depths. Floating on the horizon. However, as the, re- as the research vessel approached the object, it became evident that they were not dealing with a machine-tooled structure, but a living, breathing, gargantuan beast. The crew stared in awe at this biological anomaly until it submerged moments later. There are persistent rumors that suggest that members of the research team managed to snap a series of photos of the thing during their brief encounter, but these images have been allegedly suppressed in order to either spare the government-funded research team the shame and potential financial ruin of being associated with this extraordinary event, or because it is a secret that the Japanese government wants to keep. The Japanese government is pushing the giant uh, nocturnal arctic creatures under the fucking rug? So some say. So what did they do? I find it a little no, dubious. No, what the fuck did they do? All right, give me a second. Dude. I find it a little dubious that, well, of course, a fucking government research vessel is going to be loaded with cameras. People took fucking pictures. Well, yeah. Even if you just thought yeah. it was a sub, you right. took pictures. But I don't see why a scientific research vessel would be ashamed of taking a picture of a huge, un- I mean, if you're a whaling vessel and you find a brand new, unknown, massive oceanic creature that is a boom not a bane well you, you would you would definitely you would be proud so i don't you would i think. don't subscribe to that notion that well we were sent out for whales we found this giant amazing brand new thing oh or the shame they're gonna how will we live i don't down? know it is japanese <laughs> well it's true i mean there are weird... the honor of not getting the whale and getting this other thing is like gotta kill yourself Oh Jesus, that's fucking hard! I, Holy shit! Or not the, whale like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they're gonna get fucking. You know, they're gonna catch a bunch of shit because people are gonna be like, "Oh, you're supposed to be a scientific vessel, and you call this picture of an alleged sea monster." I'm more interested in the, in the fucking Japanese government knowing about it, but being like, "We gotta cover this shit up. We can't let people know about this." I agree. This. That's a lot more intriguing. Yeah. So is that a fucking Japanese weapon? Did they breed this fucker? Well, we are gonna get to that. Is weaponized? Possibly. Godzilla real? Is Godzilla real? I, mean, I hope. I, mean, I clearly hope so, but not. Palezilla. I mean, hopefully he's just cool and like spits pizza and not fucking atomic pizza? fire. Yeah. Oh, no, that would be, be my it dream. It would be but... so hot, though. It would like, you, sure, you'd be like, oh, it's pizza. And then it fucking sears the flesh off you. Yeah, it's true. Because it's well, atomic irradiated you just You let it mozzarella. sit. Yeah. You let it sit. Let it sit. <laughs> you yeah. let it sit. Let it sit. The fuck? It goes without saying that as soon as this account was published online, word of the intriguing enigma spread across the globe and a genuine pop culture phenomenon was born. In November of 2007, the buzz surrounding these mystery monsters and the accompanying photographs, which had started to turn up in droves, was so intense that the editors of Japan's Mu magazine, M-U like, um, basically the Pacific version of Atlantis, a missing lost continent that was, you know, sank beneath the Pacific waves, um, decided to publish an article regarding this perplexing puzzle. Moo, much like Fate magazine, is a periodical that is dedicated to the dissemination of information regarding all manner of paranormal phenomenon. And the article they devoted to the Ningen was a huge hit. The piece speculated that these as yet unidentified creatures were likely indigenous to the icy waters of the southern oceans. Mu even displayed Google a Google a Google a Google uh, Maps image, thank you very much, of what was evidently a Ningen swimming in the South Atlantic off the coast off the coast of Namibia. I think I said that right. Namibia? Namibia. Okay. Namibia. Yeah. Cool. Namibia. Yes indeed. Soon after the article was published, a mini deluge of accounts, photos, and grainy video footage flooded the web. 
Most agree that these unverified reports and images constitute little in the way of real evidence. None of this, however, has dissuaded those who believe that the Ningen are corporeal life forms from speculating that the Japanese government is actually taking these sightings very seriously and amassing a huge body of evidence regarding their existence. Now, there's two theories about why that they would be doing this and and trying to keep it concealed. The first one <clears throat> is is that um, there there's something they found biologically within these creatures that has healing properties or something very valuable medicinal qualities that they're trying to monetize okay. like rhino horn. yeah like rhino well, horns give you boners and shit well yes maybe maybe something like that i i'm assuming that it's actually more if, assuming of course it's real that it's more of a legitimate thing because i mean rhino horn or fucking pangolin scales are just basically keratin their fingernails they, so they're murdering beautiful almost extinct animals when they could basically just gnaw on their buddy's fucking toenails and get the same exact medical but is supposed to give like boner or something that well of course everything all traditional medicine really comes down to the boner and you know i mean we don't have viagra so i'm really yeah, so really why, glad you know, we're, we're gnawing on why go for yeah, why go, have, why go for the rhino to. like just get the fucking cialis or whatever is that a, a, a pill too right cialis I, blue chew get blue chew anything you need to give you a woody that doesn't have to kill an animal yeah i'm okay with that it sounds I'm, solid i'm good it's called science it's the 21st or just fucking control century. your blood pressure one of the two It'll and, help and leave too. the elephants alone too what? god damn yeah. it control there you your go. Blood makes pressure. me so mad yeah but especially pangolins as i mentioned before they're my favorite on land narwhals the sea but well, clearly, leave those fuckers alone. But they think that yeah. these that these nin these ningen might have some sort of like healing property to them. And then conversely, and okay. this goes back to Uh-oh. fucking what Mr. Do Mark ass what here. What do we got here? That they have very toxic blood <gasps> that can be weaponized, and what they're trying to do What's is either favorite? conceal this knowledge so that they can use the you know the innards of a fucking ningen to uh uh you know help their own fucking armies or just to basically keep Americans, Russians, and Chinese from doing the same and doing a lot more damage. Oh, so this is like their fucking ace in the hole. They got acid for blood brigade. It's it's yeah. right. There's no one between. It's either they super heal and cure yeah, or, or just utter devastation yeah, exactly. by acid. By acid blood. It's yeah. death. I mean, no Nothing. one says acid blood. They just say weaponizable well, Guts, but you know what it is. You know. Acid blood, dude. Of course, they it's got acid. hoses and shit, and like, they just fucking turn like it sweet on. Beaver teeth that can like gnaw through titanium. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe all the sundry parts of a fucking. So it. maybe they just found this species, and they were like, you know, let's see what we can do with it. And they're like, holy shit, fucking look, Ryan, look what they got over here, and they got fucking all kinds of crazy fucking blood. I mean, if they can eat through the fucking hull of a sub and yeah, squirt armpit juice and melt half a fucking a continent. Fuck yeah, dude. They just fart acid. Fart. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so it just pretty much sounds like a like a dragon. They are the Bermuda Triangle. They would be, yeah. It just makes sense. They really would. Of course, be. that's too tropical. All right. I mean, and but the thing too, these things are huge. And this, the, I looked at the Google Maps image here and a couple other images of them, and uh, it's. I mean, it's Google Maps. It's kind of hard to really tell. Like it just looks like a white thing in the water. There's not really much there. Um, but uh, but yeah, okay, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's, I drew a picture that's super... probably on there. Give, give Chris a, a little idea of what I'm these sort of seeing from here. A couple, it, they're sort of like bulbous heads headed. Yeah, this thing looks like a sw- just like a swimming, a swimming like ghost. a swimming phantom. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I said. Yeah, yeah. A bulbous headed sloppy ghost. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's that's, what... that's a ningen. I mean, it, it's two interesting theories there. Either the the healer or the destroyer. I like that. I um, don't know. Why, why, why? How do those... Oh, why? Why is, it, why is it those? Because the Japanese people discovered it, and what else are they going to do? Yeah. Knowing what we know of Japanese culture, they are going to villain, vilify it or hero-size it. I know that's a word. Yeah, oh, yeah, hero-size. One or the other. My favorite. Every time. But here, kind of in along these same lines, there are scads of rumors circulating which concern MIB-like agents warning eyewitnesses to remain silent about the creatures they claim to have encountered. Oh, so the sailors on this shit. research vessel, other random fishermen that are going into the, the southern Arctic regions, apparently more right. so than the northern, and claim to have seen or photographed these things, mm-hmm. are apparently getting the exact same old-school men in black treatment. Just popping and being like, you didn't see anything. These ninja proponents also claim 
that the bulk of the shoddy photographs and half-baked stories that have been publicly released regarding these creatures were created by this nefarious and clandestine organization to cover up the truth and to, and to dismiss the whole notion that these things might be real as the ravings of crackpots and hoaxers. So what they're saying is that there has been an intentional flood of... I mean, anyone of, who goes online and looks at Ning and... Um, uh, images is going to know most of them look like right shit shows. So there's like an active like disinformation campaign going on, like, exactly. like Mirage Men or whatever that documentary was. And to that end, okay. any student of the history of ufology will realize that this was the same tact employed by the U.S. and many other governments to debunk the very real UFO phenomenon during the 20th century. Skeptics suggest that this method was employed to reduce the ever-growing paranoia regarding flying saucers during the Cold War, but many others believe that they were doing more than preventing panic, that they were and still are hiding one of the greatest secrets never told. Could the Ningen be yet another chapter in this long lineage of governmental cover-ups? It's a question. I mean, it's, it seems it's certainly more of a stretch. Because on the other hand, everything about the idea that they're putting false images out there and that like this real whaling team and, you know, government right. research vessel saw it um, suddenly gets clouded by all sorts of different things. All of that could be, OK, yeah, it's a grand conspiracy because they're trying to keep the fucking acid farts to themselves. Yeah. But it could also be explained much more simply as and it's a line of bullshit and the images are shitty because it's shitty fucking photoshopped images. Yeah. Yeah. And these things, and and this is something we're gonna have to deal with in a second. Um, whaling ships have been on these fucking oceans forever, mm -hmm. murdering on mass, just you know, so you could light your oil lamps or whatever back in the day, and now for food or whatever other reason. The whole whaling ship thing is kind of fucking suspect. Yeah, it's real sketchy. But I'm saying, why would they have not seen them until the mid '90s? Well, I mean, right. if these things, True. if they emerged or were let loose in the mid '90s, well, that's that's the other thing. Is it? You're talking the Arctic. There's a lot of people that say global warming. I didn't want to bring Late it up. Late 90s, you know, all of a sudden parts of the yeah. Arctic ice flow have been broken up for the first time in, if not millennia, maybe even millions of years. Yeah. And maybe things that were contentedly living beneath the ice where they would have no interaction. And all of a sudden came up. And who knows what they eat, you know? Dude, there's like fucking four polar bears left. And I think two of them just died. It's, it's over. There's two polar bears. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Shit's real. Oh, no, the shit's real. Yeah. No, climate change is absolutely fucking real, but could it be that that's what triggered their release? One of the things that freaks me the fuck out about the whole ice melting and shit like that is when you get to, like, the prehistoric bullshit, where they're like, oh, when this melts, we get dinosaur colds. That's not cool. Like, like, that's the shit that will kill you. That will, like, wipe out fucking the whole fucking human race. Dinosaur cold. Do you mean like we get the bacteria that once killed the dinosaurs? Yeah, like this old, like old, like prehistoric viruses and shit, and bacteria that are frozen. Yeah. I can see like, where that like would permafrost. be problematic. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's per, it's the, the permafrost or whatever that, well, they're, that they're worried about. Not fucking, so permanent now, is no, it? That they're worried about melting and shit, and then all of a sudden, the next Tempo thing you know, frost. You got fucking, you got fucking, uh, you know, pterodactyl polio everywhere, and oh fucking, my God. yeah, and the next thing you know, we're all fucked. Like this is the shit I worry about, man. I'm fucking nervous. Well, nobody I wants. Any of that. Never once been up at night worrying about pterodactyl polio. You but don't I know, assure dude. you, you don't I assure know. you that's about to change now that you've introduced me to Speaking it. Speaking of pterodactyl, dude, somebody, all somebody of brought up pterodactyl porn on one of our posts. Oh boy. Yeah, because we're talking about pilgrim porn. Sure, I can see where one leads to the I other. I was gonna look it up, but I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't. I was like, I don't want to be on the list you, about pterodactyl you, porn. Boy, so, why would you be on the list? Yeah, who knows? I don't know. There's people dressing up like dactyls. <laughs> <laughs> like from fucking Pee Wee's Playhouse, the fucking pterodactyl. Oh my god! Hey Pee Wee! <laughs> oh, gross. Anyway, yeah, I don't get the physics of that. Yeah, but, we'll but no, it could very well just time. be some like a species that was hanging up there, but then global warming made them migrate. Yeah. Or like Rob said, if they're, if they're fucking living under some sweet fucking ice dome, you know, what if, what if these are the things that live beyond the ice wall of the flat Earth? I don't want to say it, but. I'm okay, well that's dumb. Saying it. Oh, now I'm dumb. Now I'm dumb. No, no, you've, you've been I've dumb. Said, now I'm you dumb. have been dumb. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Thank you. No, Thank just you. in the past five years, we get all kinds of bugs that we sh never got before. 
Like stink bugs never happened. Yeah. Up until yeah. Not, not five, six here. years ago. Yeah. Box elders with, never happened. You know, like, we get black squirrels and, and stuff like that that were north and now and they they're moved. All moving here. Yeah. So maybe if this is some like migratory pattern. I mean, actually speaking of that, there there's bears that are sighted ten to fifteen miles from us. Which is crazy. Yeah, bears are moving. That when was bears are moving never. in. When, when bears are moving in, something's An happening. Issue. Yeah. Like 'cause we I mean, we're not deep we're we're in central New York, but we're not north enough near the Adirondacks where we deal with bears. No. I mean, the day there's a bear in the middle of the city, it's going to be over. We're like wineries. Shut her down. Be over. Shut her down. <laughs> it's over. A fucking pump your brakes. That's not that bear. Bear <laughs> over, man. <laughs> bear <laughs> over. <laughs> Dude. So they're going to call me. Like, we marched I'm waiting for the, bear the, the deer. When they, like, as you know, there's just deer in my backyard. Of course. I'm just going to see, like, some two legged fucking deer. Oh, like, it's gonna be like, like the, the deer king is gonna walk out, and be, <laughs> the deer king. like in robes, walking into legs and being like, "Hello, Chris, you would be punished now for your actions, or whatever." I'll be okay because you're, you're, you're not a hunter, yeah. So you, you'd be all right. But that's gonna be it. He's well, gonna say go, and then they're all gonna come out like a wave, oh, a tidal deer? wave of fucking deer. Yeah, unless it's that fucking one day that we're all eating their two whoppers for six dollars, and they're like, "But cows are some of my best friends." Yeah. Tertiary pain. That's why we'll, you, we'll say you know impossible, impossible. That's why whopper. you get the impossible whopper. <laughs> that's, why, that, See? that's why. That's why we get real whoppers wrapped in impossible whopper wrappers. Wow, we're going way too deep. Well, with the this. fucking deer king doesn't fuck around. When he fucking stomps a fucking uh, a hole in your face because he realizes that it's an impossible, it's a burger wrapped in an impossible wrapper. Yeah. You How's lie he to the know fucking that? deer king. He's never eaten meat. You don't, unless you, the fucking uh, deer king is a fucking hypocrite. He could be. I Might don't be. know. Well, if they, you know, are still banging. And like they do, yeah. there's going to be a lot of them. They might have well, to eat each other. But anyway, it, if these that, things are coming from the Arctic, I mean, that's deep. That's fucking real deep. Well, do you mean in terms of ocean? Yeah. Yeah, but all of the it, oceans are deep. But I'm saying, well, I guess too vast and undiscovered. Like okay, most there. of the yes. ocean, I guess. But whatever. Vast. It, is, whatever. it is deep and cold, virtually unknown. Ice wall too. I have a present ice wall. Okay, it's we're thing. not. No. We're not doing that. We right just now. Keep, we're just trying to be serious, and you're not. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> oh, serious. really? The fucking Deer King and Rob the Dupa, Deer Dupa, King. The Deer King, really? Is oh, a, now we're listen, serious. Okay. The Deer we're King is a logical. For the future. That is evolu- Eventually, these animals are going to evolve in a million years. Yeah. Deer might not be the prey that they are now. And Everything's when they evolving. Discover the ice wall. Eventually, and they put it on the internet. There you the, go. the Deer King's coming. Might take a million years. <laughs> a million years. Nice. All right, so back to back to the, the fucking. <laughs> Are you sure? Because I think maybe this episode is really about the deer. The king deer king. You point. think so? All right. Well, all right. Well, all right. back to the ninjin. Yes. Ningen. Um. Yeah. The size of these things, though, like you, I, I guess sixty to ninety. On the flip Big. side of what we were talking about, flat earth and deer king aside, um, yeah, that's a huge fucking animal in the it's water. Big. Like that's huge. Absolutely. Hey, I ever seen like a whale like in Boston or anything like that? You can go do like the whale watching and shit it, from a distance. Dude, it's frightening. Like yeah. I saw it from no, like it's hard to the believe street that big. It's yeah. are on the real. It's yeah. ridiculous how big they are. How big do blue whales get? I'm not sure, but I think they're one of the biggest mammals in the ocean. They I'm are almost the positive. biggest mammal that ever lived. Period. Okay. I can tell you that much. I just can't tell you how big they are specifically. So if these things are that mm, big, how do they? <laughs> Either they've been hiding for that long, or again, this thing could have possibly been released. We don't know. All right, let me. Or, let or me, it's not are, actually as big as they think it is. Uh, so true. Yeah. Let me finish this up real quick, and then we're going to start getting into our theories and different right. ideas. Okay. Sounds good. I will be the first to admit that tales of the Ningen have all the vaguely untraceable earmarks of a seafarer's fishing tale, combined with the urban myth-making abilities of internet pranksters. Add to this mixture a few clever and not so clever Photoshop artisans, and we have the makings of a grand old oceanic legend in the vein of the Flying Dutchman or the Carnivorous Kraken. Still, it bears pointing out that after generations of folklore regarding creatures such as the Kraken mentioned above, scientists were finally able to confirm the existence of colossal whale-battling squid in the briny deep. So while most, if not all, of the purported photos of the Ningen, Ningen, now I'm just fucking doing it wrong, Ningen are probably hoaxes, and the stories backing them up are just as likely fables, this does not completely rule out that the genesis of this legend might be a genuine genuine biological entity. Be they real 
hoax or the subject of a vast global conspiracy. These titanic beasts continue to be an intriguing enigma, and until a carcass washes ashore on some isolated New Zealand beach or is found frozen in an Arctic glacier, that is likely how they will remain. So that's the wrap up. All I'm right. trying to take Solid. rarely, but a, you've got to take a skeptical stance on this. A little but bit. I'm still a little open. bit. And so we're going to discuss some of the different possibilities they could be. Okay. But one of the things that that um, intrigues me the most is what would they eat? Just supposing for shits and giggles that these are legit. Well, a blue whale is about 82 feet. Okay, so, so this thing is at least as big, right. if not slightly bigger, than the biggest mammal ever. Now, maybe it's a mammal. Maybe it's a fish. Okay. Maybe it's an amphibian. Hmm. I doubt it's a mollusk. No. But, no, probably not. But, you know, but they're blubbery, so. Right, right. I mean, but, Things that well, big tend to eat krill or, or small mass I'm sure, life forms. I'm sure there's enough shit in the ocean for it to eat, though. But this thing could also be eating orca. It can, yeah, you know, ooh, uh, it eats whale. While, group, while groups of, you know, animals Man. are hunting smaller creatures like sea lions, this massive thing can be the one that just scoops and So I think it'd be uh, some weird, like, jellyfish type thing. Could be, yeah. Like a big gelatin, or maybe it's a super huge. organism. Yeah. Maybe what looks like one giant yeah, creature like... is a super <laughs> organism of like... smaller creatures that come together and just form, which is why sometimes it might look like it has a tail, and other times it looks like it's swimming with fucking big Michael Phelps arms. Right, right. Or if it is, yeah, If it, and, and also, too, if it is gelatinous, it just the, the movement of it. I guess the only thing, I, maybe what we should start with, though, is that this is posted on a forum in the early 90s on the internet. So, right, skeptically speaking, right there. Well, it's why not I that, pointed that out. Not yes. that real shit isn't posted on there. Because if it is, like, an anonymous board, people do go there to, like, dump fucking, you know, like, before WikiLeaks and shit like that. People go there to, like, dump stuff. So, um... So, yeah, I guess they could, you know, lend a, a, a little bit there. But then again, if you did want to get the information out, you would go to like a, a completely anonymous forum where you could just be like, oh, hey, look. No, a highly fucking, there you go. technological well, yeah. culture like Japan, you are, for whatever reason, as a member of this government research team, not allowed to reveal your sources. Right. And you're held to a um, weird fucking standard that no one can attain. And so an anonymous posting would be just the way you would do it. It would be how you would get the information yeah. out. Yeah. So like I say, it, it, as easily as it is to believe that it right. is just okay. uh, internet ruse, it's also probably the most logical method of disseminating information when you can't do so publicly. Sure. Yeah. And that's the thing. So we're just going to have to weigh that out. All right. Well, but you know, it's, good, it's, it's good to bring that up, though. It's good to keep that in the fucking... Because, you know, I mean, God, how many cr fucking just... Bat shit crazy internet things like I mean Slender Man started off as creepy pasta and then two girls fucking tried to kill their friend. And so, then Canic Chase claims to have reports of a bona fide of a entity Slender that Man, resembles yeah, it, yeah, which is either Tulpa esque or fuck all knows. High strangeness, dude. Fucking high strangeness. All right, so probably the most pedestrian theory is that um, due to its large eyes and mouth as well as its broad chest, the the Ningen may be a heretofore unknown giant species of albino ray, like a super massive ray. That's a theory that's been proposed out there. It's not one. It's I like a Godzilla-sized ray. It's big. It's huge. I yeah. kind of wish that's the deal. I know. It kind of sounds cool. But it never is described I, I as winged. No. And oh, that to me, unless didn't... it's got like clear right. skin flaps between... It's but I mean, I guess depending on how you look See, at that, it, again, maybe fucking it... stingrays. Isn't that how Steve Irwin died? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got a barb But manta heart. rays don't have the barbs. Oh, they They're don't. They're just big, beautiful, gentle giants of the sea. Now, not 60 to 90 feet of That's gentle giants. Huge giant. fucking ray. Manta yeah. rays are fucking awesome, though. Yeah, yeah they're cool. big, but yeah, I don't think they get that big. Mouths are weird. Yeah, well, the filter feeders. Again, yeah, like a lot of big things. Weird. Hmm. Bottom feeders. Carp. Now, now, now you're like doing a bad Robert the Shaw I know. Quint. Catfish. Catfish. Cow's Cow's Cow's. Yeah. Lifeless. Yeah. Tilapia. Sheephead. Tilapia. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever seen sheephead around here? The, Not the, since the, I was a kid. Yeah, they're fucking. I, they're the la squirrely. Actually, one of the last times I brought the kids fishing, I accidentally caught one. I was like, shit. I got to deal with this. Was I with you? No, who was, I, was, I was fishing years ago, and all we caught one night was uh, mud puppies. 
Oh. And it was an entire night of mud puppies. And I'm just like, really? What do we do with these? <laughs> with these assholes of the river? You just try not to get bitten. That's yeah. all you can it do. It sucked. As soon as you pull them up on land, they fucking put their shit out and start crawling around. Oh, Hating sucks. on you. Sucks, yeah. Planning Hissing on what they're going to do to your children. They hiss at you. That's gross. Anyway. Um, all right, manta ray, kind of cool. I like that. I kind of like the idea of it just being a big old fish. It's kind of fun. I, do, I, mean, well, I, I mean, I'm lying because I like acid for blood. I think that's kind of cool that like, they're yeah, weaponizing right. it. They're making their own kaiju. I, I mean, the, it's not even a conservative uh, estimation that a lot of marine biologists say maybe 20% of the ocean species have been discovered. Maybe. Right. Th- I mean, it's just vast. And so, granted, most of the things that remain undiscovered are likely very small, normal-sized, perhaps even microscopic, not the 60 to 90 foot range yeah but still some of them yeah, I mean, a handful it, of them like, might be is it like the deeper you be. go the bigger they get no I would generally it's smaller weirder. yeah because small, there's, there's it's, a lot of room yeah the pressure right. makes for not big things right also bigger creatures need a lot of energy right yeah there's just not a lot of food down there which know, is not to say stuff. that there haven't been um sonar readings in like the marianas trench and other places of colossal creatures yeah but they could just maybe temporarily be going through. And, right. But there are things in the ocean, I mean, obviously, th- on. Right. And also, those things, if they were that big, I'm not exactly sure how you, if they, they, they could even make it up to a certain point. If you're born that far if, under. Right. Like, like, we have to pressurize. Yeah. So, like, something that, if, when it probably can't go up, like. Something would have to evolve to slowly make its way up. So something that you saw down there just couldn't just come the, up like to the, the surface. The, the I don't think. Pressure. I. It seems like you, they yeah. wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, I could see that. It would I mean, maybe, kill a lot of creatures. But, I mean, d- d- does it have, unless it, it's a body? I mean, can, you don't just see decompress. anglerfish hanging out like, hey. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. no I mean, thank God because they're fucking terrible. Maybe just but, they, maybe I don't. But just what they do. But it seems yeah. like something that they I mean, would none not of us are marine do, biologists, uh, but I think Chris is right on that. I think if you're <clears throat> designed to live at a certain level of pressure, you cannot easily venture into other right. pressures without suffering debilitating, if not lethal, okay. uh, pressure. I mean, at least for, for humans, yeah. I don't know how. We'll, um, I mean, unless fish again, work again, like, like that, are, but well, you know, when you have swim bladders and stuff, maybe it's mitigated. If this yeah. is something that was developed by the Japanese government as a weapon, oh, so you're saying weapon from word go? I was one of, one of the theories. Yes, yeah, it could be. It could have been developed by the government as a weapon. They could have <laughs> made it. They could have grown it and bred it stronger, faster, more. Actually, gelatinous. I don't. I don't think that was a theory. I think the theory was that they were trying to weaponize a natural. Oh, they're, yeah, they're saying that it was there, and they oh, tried to you know part of yeah. the ocean's fauna. Okay, I'm just going to. I like your I'm idea. Just say no, that maybe let's they go with fucking, that. Well, Both theories were that it was there, and either they they it had acid blood, and they're trying to make it a weapon, right. or it's a cure all. All right, well, it's, well, I'm gonna, it's the second coming. It's I'm Jesus. Gonna, it's, oh, it's the second. It's Jesus <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the water. I'm going to go out on a limb here my, with my. I guess a theory that I just created, didn't know about it. Copyright 2019. Mark Dash 2020. Dash 2020. Dad um, Gang 2020. Dad, <laughs> <laughs> Dad Gang uh, 2020. So, yeah, but what if we are dealing with something that is genetically modified and created by the Japanese government as a weapon? That's always a possibility. You think it's a, is it cloning? Le- is possibly? it leftover something? World War II? No, no, I'm thinking this is more. Oh, that, see, no, you is, missed this your is opportunity. More, this is more recent. This That's is where you more fucked recent. up, dude. Why? Because. Unit 731, some yeah. dark, dangerous part of the past of all they, yeah, Japanese history. All they did was torture people. Yeah, but then... That you know of. This, they have a, they, there's no marine biology section of unit... What, what is it again? Fucking... 731? Yeah, there's no marine biology section. Like, you, oh, hey, let's go be cool. As far as you, you know. know. Yeah. Jesus. We've all seen that movie, right? The Man Behind the Sun. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. And they had it in that fucking, you know, the, the aquatic fucking cage that they were ready to unleash it. The last you don't ditch think... effort to win World War II. It gets trapped under an ice flow. It sits beneath the fucking Arctic. You're writing a for movie. For 45 years or however long it is. <laughs> Dark Ark. We wrote it. Exactly. <laughs> Dark Ark. 1995 so, rolls by. Right. The salt water has eroded the fucking titanium casing. The great yeah. engine gets out. You, you don't think, like, Nazis and stuff had places set aside around, oh, the, sure, around yeah. the globe. I'm sure. I'm sure. For a global assault. Oh, all right. Okay, Listen, so the, the, this is the, the, on, Chris, the fucking Marine Division. 
They, I was just saying that in the 90s, the Japanese was government was like fucking around with like genetics and they're like, oh, hey, look at what we possibly could have made. That's named. so boring. In oh your words, God. that's not fun. That's true. Oh, but that's right. not it's fun. It's not fun. But I'm, before we get to the fun, we got to do the whole fucking this is what could possibly happen. We already been there. All right, fine. Fine. All right, fine. It's a fucking, it's a part of Unit 741. Just happy. Ah, just make them happy. Yeah, happy. Oh, Seven forty-one. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> that clearly was the marine biology. The only, unit. The only skeptical stuff is it's misidentified, and people think that's what it is. Yeah, it actually. It and unfortunately sounds like. It's aside a from that, yeah. all bets are on. It, it could, could be. be all theories are. Right. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I guess bringing it back to Earth here, um, it does kind of sound like a disgrace. Before be you a, go too close to Earth, though, species. there are some people that really think that it might be a spiritual manifestation, sort of Whoa. like the yokai of Japanese lore, you okay. know, the kappas, the bakus, all sorts of awesome creatures of legend. Uh, Richard Freeman wrote a great book on it. Yeah, I did. recommend did. everyone cool. check it out if you're interested in this stuff because it's fucking awesome. And, uh, and so maybe... There is a spiritual, or, or I don't know what else you call it, just a, a preternatural entity that is not necessarily of this world or not that somehow got conjured in the 90s, thus explaining why it was not seen in 88 or 1840 or whenever the fuck else it could have okay, been seen. So it came through the fucking the drift? Mm. That's just a theory. I'm not saying the it's Pacific my baby. The Pacific Rim theory, it came through the drift? The drift. All right, cool. The nebulous spiritual drift. All right, yeah. Well, I mean, I love interdimensional okay. shit, so yeah, fucking you sold me on that one. It's an interdimensional. Could be Japanese fucking, aquatic pumpkin head. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can fit the pumpkin head theory you pretty can much fit in pumpkin head everything. Into everything. Totally. Oh, yeah. Totally. Vengeance spirit. All right. What yeah, about like aliens, Rob? We got any alien theories yeah, sticking around? Yeah, that's oh, a theory. What do we got? Bring it. Well, I mean, that's it. Basically. Again, it's aliens. I feel like <laughs> we had this conversation aliens. before. What's theory? Uh, it's aliens. It's aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Did well, it, if it's with if it's dealing with water, though, you're talking. Did like, anybody like, see anything? Like a USO, possibly. Yeah, in the sky or well, like in the some water. Underwater Japanese alien base. Oh, I mean, was Ed Harris there? <gasps> He's always there. Was Come a, on, is this abyss? Is was this Virgil abyss? Brigman in Wait, the area? Are we old and going to die in abyss? Right? Is that what happens in abyss? That is not what's going to happen to us in the abyss because none die? of us are going to get stuck in there. No cocoon. Yeah, well, that's a pool in fucking Florida. Don't we, <laughs> we get rejuvenated? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. That's not the great abyss, am I, dude. Am I confusing abyss and cocoon? If Boy, you are, you really fucked up. Yeah. Okay. All right. You you need to trace retrace your steps <laughs> and, and take I, the right path. And then there's like what is it, uh, abyss two where like you just like deal are like dealing with the sun, right? What's that one? Event horizon. That's what it's called. Yeah. Because it's not <laughs> abyss two. <laughs> the abyss two event horizon. <laughs> Did you guys see that movie? <laughs> yeah, this, dude. Is, this is how all this shit in my head matches together. Charles 2, Back to the Future. Did you guys see that one? <laughs> Shark goes back in time in a car and fucks some shit up. Wears Nikes. Your mind palace is in shambles, dude. I actually want to good. see that movie it's now. It's really not good. It's not. Abyss 2. <laughs> Everything's Abyss 2. <laughs> All right, let's start with Holy a, shit. All one right. foundational thing. Okay. USOs. All right. Unidentified submersible objects. All right. All right, so some people say that USOs, those objects that were basically phantom submarines or whatever, yep. might have been radar contacts with these things. Okay. But because so many people from obviously most recently and famously the Nimitz encounters, and I think 2004 or whatever, with a giant Tic Tac... <laughs> Yeah, that's, ducking around. that's kind of interesting because I didn't realize that, that when they first observed that object, it's actually over the top of something that's in that's the water. Sinking. yes. Yeah, which is really cool. Many, many people think that there are extraterrestrial or interdimensional, whatever it may be, <clears throat> non-Earth originating right. uh, species have bases beneath their, our oceans and they which, can use it to fly. If that's the case, this could be along the lines of what you're saying, but instead of the Japanese government doing an experiment, an extraterrestrial experiment, no, um, could be. an unleashing of something, right. maybe not even nefarious. Like maybe it eats fucking radioactive leaks. Maybe this thing yeah. is like a savior of the seas. Who knows? Or maybe it's a war machine and it just hasn't been deployed right. yet. 
a, a real interesting part of that story, and I'm not sure if it was ever really put out there, but when uh, Joe Rogan was actually interviewing one of the dudes that uh, was chasing the the Tic Tac, right. they could actively jam radar. That's interesting. That's well, terrifying really is another way interesting. of putting it. And the, yeah, it's, it's a, I forget the name of the guy, um, the pilot, but Joe Rogan had him on his podcast, and it's probably one of the one of the rare interviews that I that I heard that I was like, huh, you know what? Like it kind of makes sense. Like aliens and whatnots. Like the ocean is the perfect spot because it's so vast and yeah. you can do so much. If as opposed to being up in the fucking air to to function under the ocean, yeah. then it makes it it's a perfect place to remain hidden. Do whatever you want to do, even if even if your job isn't to conquer. Right, you're if just you just want to study. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. And if that's the case, then maybe the 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 Ningen has something to do with this. Okay. Or possibly, like let's go like back cinematic to our cinematic roots, and you know John Carpenter's The Thing or Howard Hawks before then. Um, something crashes. It could just be an escapee. Maybe it could just be living in the in the ocean. Yeah. It just it, it's there. It adapted. It's functioning. I mean, again, there's no. I, I can't say that there's any evidence that says that it's, you know, the right. way it is. But right. you can't count out any possibility in this case. No. Really well, it would be odd if it just was happening to be able to exist in salt water. It would be. <laughs> just yeah, like, I guess. Hey. Yeah. Good thing I got these gills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank God I can and breathe. And the salt water is the perfect pH level. Yeah, thank God I can breathe in this fucking or shithole. Or if it's if it's something that's like a creature that's adapted to thrive in whatever environment it's going to, because I mean, if they have interstellar capabilities, then why would you not make you know UFO knots that are capable of adapting themselves genetically to whatever environment they're in? You know, for the maximum oh, man, that's, chance of survival. That, that size, though. Well, here's the thing. If it just was, you know, five foot eleven, and you know, and grew that the ship, big? well, you you would grow kind of like kind of like a goldfish. If you have it in a big tank, it gets bigger. If you put it in a pond, it could become a koi. Oh, that's terrifying. You know, I mean, yeah, they terrifying. can get bigger and bigger and bigger depending on how how much space they have. Right. So if suddenly this thing finds itself in an ocean, it's like, all right, so I will adapt my body to breathe this. I will eat these fish, and oh wait, there's no limit to what I can be. So I will. Maybe it doesn't even think. Maybe it's not even intellectual. Maybe it's just a just, creature that's meant to adapt to just, where it is. If it's just like an organism that just happened to be. It's probably a, a pet that got loose. You there, think so? That's <laughs> yeah. Way yeah. To look at it. Actually, Absolutely. it's an intergalactic koi. Like, well, fighters lost, and then he died. Yeah. <laughs> he that, died. That's why he's never been seen again, because it's just a blue pet. Well, pet. I mean, I really like the idea of a misidentification, but man, now you got me all sold on aliens and USOs. Well, there's no theory. Other oh, no, than misidentified that. I know. Listen, once yeah. we've entertained the notion that this is in all likelihood late 90s internet bullshittery. Right. Yeah. We have to admit that. But if we're going to entertain the notion that this is something legit and that for whatever reason, maybe the Japanese government with their own version of Men in Black are yeah. clamping down on it, then <clears throat> what could it fucking be? Man, you know how I feel about water aliens, though? Love them. Well, who <laughs> They're cool. <laughs> Fuck. Man. The only thing that would make this cooler is bioluminescence, which is obviously the coolest thing it deep ocean dwellers have. That's the best. Have. Yeah. I, I kind of like the idea, though, that it's indigenous to Earth, just doing its shit beneath sure. the ice caps. And this becomes, I guess, probably because it's like a kaiju film. Like right. the nuclear test that should never have been I'm conducted. I'm thinking maybe it was a mutant. Unleashed a fucking mutant? Godzillas. A kind of mutant. And, and so our own hubris <laughs> and not taking care of the environment, you know, melts the polar ice caps and we unleash the harbinger of our own doom. Wow. Or at least a gentle, frolicking, pale white giant of the seas. Yeah. Okay. The stay puff of the fucking Arctic oceans. All right, Christopher, closing thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. It's a giant saltwater banshee. <laughs> That's, That's what, what the picture I, looks like. That's yeah. what it does. The, the picture, terror screen. The picture does oh. look like a giant saltwater banshee. What about, you know, the atmospheric monsters, you know, that oh. What's-His-Nuts is always saying, come down and mow people? The, uh, oh, shit, what are they called? Uh, uh, we The sky the spitter. Space amoebas and fucking whatnot. No, you're talking about the uh, intergalactic, uh, the, the, the Jesus light people. We talked about this with the blimps. Yeah. Was, yeah, fuck our Gantzman gliders. What all was of, it called? Uh, sh Shit. It had to do, <laughs> remember, I sent you guys all that research that I mulled over, and you're like, oh, it's a bunch of bullshit or whatever. <laughs> well, yeah, because it was. Uh, why? Well, my time is important. 
I respect you. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, not my respect my time. Let me fucking get to my shit here. These things fucking they have things that people have seen. I shit you not. Yeah, the sky just whales, sky amoebas, yeah. fucking and sky squid. I mean, there's it's a really, lot it's of atmospheric really, monsters. It's super cool. It's all kidding aside. It is really fucking if we're, cool. We're talking about like how when creatures in the deep depths when they come up they could compromise you know their physical form and, right. and end up dying. Well, what if when these sky creatures die? They just fucking go down, and the few sightings of ninjas that have been captured. Oh, dead sky they, creatures! They didn't fucking actually start getting captured until we started having Google Earth and right, other things right, that right, could right. maybe do this. So like this. the sky amoebas are just like the husk like, of but a that's dying how they die. Like amoeba? that's the last steps before death. They have to. They have to come to Earth, get grounded. But, of course, the oceans are where they're going to fucking land. Well, yeah. Well, because yeah. they can still be somewhat buoyant. They're, I mean, right. if you landed on Arizona, you would just fucking fry and crush yourself, and it would be agony. Which is what some did, apparently, according to, Gar- Gar- to the Gargantuan Glider episode. Yeah, no, it, and it could be a pile of star jelly and whatever. Or, not. Bl- or blimps. So maybe it's atmospheric monsters on the last legs. Their right. float life is over. I like it. Their s- submerged life begins, but it's brief. They die, no evidence. Their bodies are instantly dissipated in the highly salinized water. What's left of them gets devoured by the indigenous earth fishies, and we never need to deal with it again. All right, there you circle go. Circle of life. There you have it. It is the circle of, yeah, the uh, atmospheric monster life, right? I still like aliens. Or, but... or, or runaway alien pet. Yep. Or, um, or, or yeah, the terrifying wrath of a creature that should have been safely ensconced in the Arctic that we released with our own hubris come to fucking wreak havoc eventually. Not yet. It's taking its time. It's there's been also, yeah. there's my Jurassic Park theory where we just, you know, was created. So, yeah, there you go. Right. From yep. a gentle mid 90s uh, booming economy, Japan. Yeah. Because yeah. you totally had to miss the golden opportunity to make it a fucking World War II sweet fucking diabolical plot. Or it, it is a World War II weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're, they're just making a kaiju no movie one. and they built this thing in the water and some people saw it and it, the movie never got released. Though. Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> Kind of like that Loch Ness model that ended up sinking, yeah, like in the yeah, Sherlock yeah, Holmes exactly. movie yeah. back yeah. in the day. That might be my new oh, theory. Man. Totally. Oh, wow. <laughs> Chris it, has a new theory. They built it for, a, for a kaiju movie and never made it. All right, well, you know what? They're good listeners. You let us know what you think about the ninja. Uh, you can hit us up on the socials, the Instas, the Twitters, the Facebooks. Thank you all so very much uh, for the Patreon contributions. Oh, thank you. Wow. Uh, that is patreon.com slash kryptonautpodcast. Uh, December, we have an interview, uh, two or three interviews going up from the Mysticon of 2019. Yes, we do. Um, Met some good folks there. Yeah, it was, it was fun. A good it was time. super cool. Um, so check that out. That's going to be popping up there. Uh, Heller Space. Hellerspace.com for t-shirts. You can get t-shirts, hoodies, crewnecks, um, pins, magnets, stickers, totes. we got a couple of new designs that we're currently... An exclusive T Public design that we're working on that we're hoping is going to come back and yeah. everything's going to work out with it. I think it will. i got a good feeling about that. Fingers crossed. Plenty of uh, holiday sales happening. Anybody out there that's going to get our merch, we've said this before... Always wait for the sales because it's like thirty or thirty five percent off. Yeah, so wait for the sale. And it happens so often. Yeah, just wait for the sale. Check it out. If you're on T Public, create an account, sign up. They'll send you emails. I get emails fucking daily about sales. I just don't post out the sales daily because it would be fucking annoying. Yeah, it would be. It'd be super annoying. So, but yeah, check all that out. Thank you all so very much to purchase all of our merch. Also, too, if you do get our merch, post it online. Like, yeah. Fucking tag oh yeah, it. we love to see. I pictures. love seeing people rocking our shit. It's fucking. It's I end up dope putting that fuck. shit in my portfolio pictures because yeah, totally. I fucking love it. Uh, also, too, as mentioned in the beginning of this episode, Hellier season two is streaming on Amazon Prime. I am probably about I think three or four. I'm gonna say four episodes in, and I'm fucking loving it. We've, I've been talking to Rob and Chris about it off air quite a bit. Yep. And I'm yeah. Like, yeah you got fucking guys don't understand. I'm excited. It's pretty fucking sweet. So check that out. It's on Amazon Prime. It's going to be hitting YouTube uh, in December. So be sure to check that out. You can follow them on the socials and the Instas and the Twitters and all that. Um, I think that's all we got. That's it. Christmas yeah. is coming up. It is. Christmas. We, we might be doing some Christmas episodes. I know. We'll see. Possibly. Um, some trying to get some stuff for the yep. new year. We got some new so in, in the new year. We got some things happening. Definitely some uh, some new stuff that we're gonna be working on. 
Um, and I mean, thank you all so very much for, you know, being our, our listeners and sticking with us and hanging out and talking and shooting the shit. It's fucking dope that you guys are out there. We love it. I think it's awesome. It's literally the fucking best. Yeah. It's super cool. So thank you, guys you all. You rule the proverbial pit. Thank you all so very much. Let's, uh, I guess let's have a fun start to December, right? Yeah, sure. Christmas movies yeah. that make you cry. Send me a list of Christmas movies oh, that make you cry Jesus. so I can get to my wife and then she can cry and I can my finish hellier. My fucking Season sister two. loves all of those Hallmark movies and I swear to God, it's always young divorcee Kylie goes back home. Her yeah. father's toy shop is closing down That's... because the bank's foreclosing. But Roger comes in. He's a vet with a heart of gold. Yeah. But he's been through a tough time. And you know what? I told Will they him... find love? I... Save the toy store? Yeah. Go yeah. skiing with Rudolph? I swear that's all it ever yeah. fucking is. It's a small yeah. town girl who comes home to save the shop, falls in love. That's fine. You can fall in love in three days, but you know what they don't show? The fucking. And that's where they're fucking up. Because mm-hmm. if Brazzers took this shit over, oh. next level Christmas movies. You know what? That's, yeah, something, that's something I would weep to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We all would. We Shorts all weep. would. Yeah. <laughs> Thank oh, man. You so know. Very, ah. Thank you all so very much. I'll be talking to you soon. Bye. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Happy uh, Merry, Kwanzaa. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Um, what else we got? I don't know. Feliz Navidad. Yeah, Feliz Navidad, I guess. Felicia Navidad. Yep. Felicia. Yep, Felicia Navidad. Um, um, hey, Star Wars is coming out December 20th. Fuck yeah, dude. Cold, atheistic stretch of bitter winter. Yeah. Where you can be existential and read a good book. Yeah. Yeah. To happy, all of our listeners. Happy Solstice. Happy Solstice. Enjoy. Yeah. Slaytanicon, whatever you are. Yeah. You enjoyed this time of your life. You do you. Enjoy the shortened days as best you can. Because every time it's fucking 5.30 now, I think it's 11.45 at night. Yeah. And yeah. I get old man tired in the middle of the afternoon. It's terrible. So let's just all do our best in our own ways. Get through the night. Let's get through the night together, guys. We'll be talking to you. Together. The sun will come again. <laughs> The Deer King. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>